guess he was all right. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> we often get to play games pre-release, such as a multiplayer beta, and first play is a chance for us to share with you those early impressions, keeping in mind that what we're playing isn't the final product and often changes upon release. Having said all that, we've been spending some time with the Elder Scrolls Online beta, and Hex, I think our expectations for this game are dangerously high. Yeah, but how exciting is it to see the continent of Tamriel finally stitched together in one game? The prophecies of the Elder Scrolls are a fluid living thing. They are not fixed. Scrolls are said well before the events of Skyrim and Morrowind, but I think we'll save talking about the story for our final review when the game's released. Yes, let's talk about what they're trying to achieve here. Taking a massively successful single-player series like Elder Scrolls to the MMO space is an interesting step for the franchise. Yeah, but a logical move, I think, because, you know, it's such a grand world with so much lore. Scrolls is a huge brand nowadays, especially after the success of Skyrim, so it already has an established following. Plus, it's coming out on next-gen consoles consoles too, which will really increase the player base. I think the big question about this game, which we can't really answer just yet, is will that single player design and gameplay of the Scrolls series transfer over to an MMO space? And will that be enough to warrant a subscription fee? We've played around 20 hours of the beta so far and tried out each of the very flexible four classes and explored the starting areas of the three factions. The first thing I noticed though, Hex, was I could not make my character ugly. In fact, everyone in this game is super sexy. Is that sea elf? I'll have to get this wound seen to then. Even the orcs are a bit sexy. It's like this is some kind of purist colony where only the beautiful people are allowed to breed. Oh, those roguish adventurers. You know, I think it's an MMO thing, because I always struggle to make good-looking characters in Skyrim and, and in Oblivion, but here, because I think a lot of people play this in third person, they're looking at themselves the whole time, you know, they want to be hot. I always make hotter versions of me. I, I want a good fat slider in every game. <laughs> Just, I like, I like making them funny, looking. This is never go back to that Mass Effect character that you created. <laughs> Creepy Shepard was amazing. <laughs> Nightmares about that. <laughs> Combat is a hybrid of Skyrim's action and more traditional MMO mechanics, based around abilities that you can switch in and out. Ranged combat works well, but the melee is a little clunky. <laughs> Yeah, I've never really enjoyed the melee in the Scrolls games. I've always felt it's been a bit, you know, like that. But yeah, casting is great fun, especially the destruction stuff. I like that there's a decent amount of freedom in terms of what kind of class you want to be. The more you use an ability or piece of gear, the better you get at it and the more you can unlock. This skill system worked really well on Skyrim, so I'm glad that's here too. And I love that you can play this in first or third person and they're both as good as each other. It's just nice seeing all the gear that you've worked hard for, which I think is essential in RPGs. We also liked that you can bring out a variety of instruments using emotes. We immediately started a band and uh, I think we rocked Bajo. <laughs> Yes, our band would play for anyone who would listen, and some of those who wouldn't. Sorry, sorry. Quick drums. Ah, oh, she left. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's chase her. Just chase her and just keep playing music around her. She's, she's getting away. <laughs> if we could line up so we have one in each ear. <laughs> it's especially tense in first person. <laughs> The simplicity of the aimed targeting makes combat nice and intuitive. It's near identical to what Neverwinter did last year. Mm. It just works so well. I think the days of tab targeting in MMOs are pretty much over, which is nice. I'm warming to the look of the game now that I'm seeing more of the areas, Hex, but I'm not sold on the visuals. It's, it's hard to describe why it doesn't gel with me, because there is a really nice high level of detail, but it's almost like the game doesn't have its own unique visual identity. Uh, personally, I do like that more realistic colour palette, though, similar to Skyrim. It just makes the fantasy feel more sophisticated than some of the cartoonier MMOs out there. But uh, I know what you mean, it doesn't quite have the wow factor of something like Guild Wars 2 with all those beautiful vistas. Yeah, I think it's a victim of the higher detailed you go in a game like this, the, the less of a unique look you can create. Weather effects do create some nice foggy ambience though, along with some really lovely sound design. I could stay here like this all day. You especially notice it when the game uses phasing to change the zones, much like WoW did in its last few expansions. This means the world changes around you as you take actions in the game, which in turn makes you feel like you're actually affecting the world. Yeah, that phasing technology is so sophisticated, I just love it. And it works so well with the scrolls' style of storytelling. It's not all pick up a quest, return to quest giver. Often they'll meet you at dungeon doors or go with you sometimes, and that all feels very fluid and polished. I'll show that friend here, we'll get us to safety. 
The quests themselves are nothing new though, it's really click this and collect that, and that is a little concerning to me. Also I find the quest givers tend to waffle on a bit. <laughs> yeah, it is always tempting when you're burning through quests to skip through the dialogue in an MMO. But I think with Elder Scrolls you really benefit from stopping and listening to the story and just letting yourself get into it and enjoy the adventure to get the most out of it. You know, if I had one wish it would be that they had adopted some of that player dialogue option stuff from Star Wars The Old Republic. I, I just loved that and this would have been the perfect game for it. When you put it that way I see your point. Yeah, I wish every game adopted that. I recently dipped my toes back into Old Republic and I've only just realised how important it is that you take part in those conversations and how much more connected you are to the story when you're actively involved in the dialogue or trying to be a jerk to the quest giver. I could agree. I did notice though, after around level 8, the quest tended to open up a bit more and give you more options in how you wanted to complete them and that's a really good thing so I hope that continues for the rest of the game. I can't stand to be in your company anymore. Sadly, our time with the beta is over for now, but it's already got us hooked into me a little bit, Hex, and I've got the MMO itch. Well, I guess we'll get back into it in April when the game is released, and we'll bring you our full review of Elder Scrolls Online then.